And the manager really wants it to be done in July, so you really not got to produce something that says that it's going to be done in July. Uh, all of these things have a strong tendency to exert a downward pressure on the estimates as we present them. And the thing about that is just because you say that you know that it's going to be done, just because you produce a piece of paper that says that it's going to be done on July 30th or something like that, or just because you say you can get it done in an hour absolutely, like that doesn't change the underlying complexity of the issues. Like you can present these things in different ways, but it doesn't change the reality of the fact that there's still a range of possible outcomes and a lot of things that can go wrong between the beginning and the end of a project. So um, can we do this a little bit better? Obviously I think we can, otherwise I wouldn't be up here, I would be down here watching uh, something else, perhaps. And I think that the key to producing better, more effective estimates is to focus on the parts of estimates that people are good at. And, and there are parts, there are those things. Um, also, really avoid false precision. Uh, just because when you divide something by something else, you get five decimal places, doesn't mean that all of those five decimal places have actual meaning in the world and that you need to present them to your client. Uh, this will cost $186,403.75. That's our estimate. That's probably not valuable. Um, it's probably more valuable to say that it will cost somewhere between $150,000 and $200,000 if, in fact, that's the, those are the calculations you come to. So to think about the parts of this process that people tend to be good at, um, I want to think a little bit about what goes into the amount of calendar time that a feature takes. If I say that I can get this admin report done by Tuesday, what are the factors that determine how long that actually takes? And there's basically three. There's how complicated the task itself is. There's how good or knowledgeable the developer is in doing the task. Uh, and then there's the amount of time that the developer is going to be able to spend on that task, plus a certain amount of overhead for project management, deployment, testing, that kind of stuff. All of that stuff sort of towards time on task. So let's, let's look at those. Um, we tend to be, in my experience, very bad at estimating time on task. Um, as developers, we tend to be, again, optimistic about how much time we're actually going to spend developing as opposed to eating or checking Facebook or Twitter. Um, and we also tend not to see the other parts of the process that are necessary, deployment, management, that kind of stuff. But time on task tends to broadly be, over, be consistent over time. If you look at this probabilistically, my meeting schedule doesn't change too much from week to week. Uh, the amount of time it takes to test a feature doesn't change too much from week to week. So although I can't necessarily predict this, if I can measure it, it's consistent. Uh, the skill of the developer. Uh, we are not very good at develop, uh, estimating this or evaluating this. Uh, and I also think within the context of estimating, uh, it's a little bit toxic to your team to say things like, yeah, Bob, if you do it this way, it'll be done on Tuesday. But if we give it to Fred, it's going to take till next Friday. Like, there is a time and a place for evaluating developer performance and when you're estimating a project, particularly in front of a client or a manager, um, that is not the time and that is not the place. But if your team stays the same, the skill of your team as a whole stays consistent. It's the same people. Hopefully they don't get less skilled over time. Um, that's a consistent value. And which brings us to the complexity of the task, which is something that actually as developers we're pretty good at. We are definitely good at estimating the relative complexity of stuff. If I gave you five stories from my, pro from my next project and asked you to rank them as to which was the least complicated and which was the most complicated, even if you don't have the context on my project, we would get pretty broad agreement on what those features are, or what, the, what that ranking is. Which is to say, like, very few people here are going to be able to tell me how many blue diamonds can fit on this screen, but every single one of us is going to tell me that the blue diamond is smaller than the white circle uh, and bigger than the red triangle. Okay. And most of us probably can say that the blue diamond is roughly eight times the size of the red triangle and maybe a half to a third the size of the white circle. Okay. Those are things that we actually are good at that kind of reasoning. 
which leads us to an estimation mechanism. We estimate the stuff that we're good at, and we let everything else sort of fall out. And that's where points come from in an Agile project. A point is a measure of complexity. And what you do from that is, what, you're, what you try to measure is the complexity of the stories that you complete in, say, a two-week iteration. And you're making the assumption that, although some of these one-point stories will be longer than other one-point stories, over time, this batch of 10 one-point stories and this batch of 10 one-point stories will take about the same length of time. And over the course of the project, the amount of time that we spend on the project will mean, and doing feature work and not bug fixes will remain roughly consistent. And the, and the amount of time that we spend in meetings will remain roughly consistent. So if I say that we can do 15 points of work in the next two weeks, that's actually a number that I can start to count on. I can do 15 points the two weeks after that. I can do 15 points the two weeks after that. And I can actually, at that point, calculate when my end date of my project is. Now, all of you are probably thinking about all of the flaws in this plan, and you're probably all right. Um, but it's the best one I've come up with. Uh, in the airport analogy, it's kind of like basing our, airport, our, our time to the airport based on the distance to the airport and the average speed we've traveled in the past, uh, which, as you can see, is going to kind of be roughly accurate, but not specifically accurate. This does depend on a certain amount of consistency. It assumes that your team size is going to be roughly consistent. It depends on you being consistent in how you convert stories to points. Um, it depends on your environment sort of being consistent. Um, in some cases, that's not possible. Um, it also takes a certain amount of time to get right. Uh, you can't, you, it takes a couple of iterations to get a number that you can count on. Um, it also helps to, de if you, when you break the problem, when you break your stories up, it also helps if you are able to break stories up into things that are roughly similar sized. In other words, if you can break things up that are mostly like one point and two point stories, the, the definition of exactly what a one point story is and what a two point story is, most teams sort of come up with rough understandings of what they are. We start with the idea that a one point story is a simple story that we all understand that we think we can get done without much problem and a two-point story is like more complicated than that like has one branch more complication than that and, and move on up from there um, it, if you if you can break your project down into small stories that are more or less evenly sized you're going to do better at this it's harder to make this work if you have a lot of small stories and a lot of really big stories um, but it requires time and as a practical level I can't normally go to my clients again and say, look, just start writing those checks and in about six weeks we'll tell you when it's going to be done. It'll be really accurate in six weeks, um, but until then you're buying a pig and a poke. <laughs> Are you writing the check yet? <laughs> it doesn't work either. Um, so you need a mechanism to come up with something at the beginning of a project that has a chance of being right that you can live with. And so let me present to you the worst way to do this, except for every other way that I've ever tried. <laughs> and the answer to this is uh, fake it. By which I mean you need to fake your velocity. You need to fake your guess of how long the project, of how long it's, how many points you're going to be able to, to get done in an iteration. You don't know that number yet, but if you've worked with the team before, you might be able to have a rough idea. Don't fake your knowledge of the problem. Don't fake your precision of your understanding of the problem, but do, at the beginning of a project to produce something reasonable, you can fake, you can make an estimate, a guess, of what that point to hour load factor is going to look like. Okay? But your output of that is a range. You're going to have a low number, you're going to have a high number. And I can't tell you how to present that to your client and a manager in a way that's going to work for you. Um, I think it's important for you as the person producing the estimate to understand what the limitations of it are and what went into it. And I think it's valuable to present all of that stuff to the person you're presenting it to. Uh, exactly how you do that, I can't tell you. Every situation is going to be a little bit different. Um, but ideally, you've started off at the beginning, you're at the beginning of a project, you've started off with some kind of meeting or some kind of place where you understand what the feature set is that you want to deliver. Um, you split that up into stories as best you can. Uh, again, precision is not the point here, just making a good faith map of the territory is what you're after. 
Um, and then you assign them to points. If you think it's less than a developer day, it's one point. If it has more complexity or more risk, it's maybe three. If it has a lot more complexity of risk, it's five or eight. I normally don't use eight point stories in active development, but uh, at the beginning of a project, if I'm doing this kind of estimate, I'll go to eight, maybe even 13 if I can't think of a way to break it down. A lot of times we just use Fibonacci numbers uh, because again, because first of all, they spread out nicely. Uh, and secondly, there's no assumption of, uh, of precision there if you're leaving out four, six, seven, <laughs> and nine. Like, <laughs> we can't be precise, we're missing entire numbers. Um, don't spend a lot of time on this. It's a rough estimate, it's a gut feel. As long as you round up and as long as you're consistent about it, it will work. Another thing that I do at the beginning for a beginning estimate this that I do not do in normal and ongoing development is give a story a range estimate. In normal development, if I get a story like create a report to, reduce, to produce revenue, I would say like, okay, uh, there's a version of this that doesn't have a lot of options and there's a version of which that has a lot of options that's more complicated. Which one do you want? And I would talk to the customer and they would tell me what they wanted and I would use that to derive the estimate. At the beginning of a project, I can't really say that. I can say that there's a version of this that's a one point and there's a version of this that's a three point. Um, and that's fine. You can have a low, sometimes you do low and high, sometimes you do low likely and high, min max lightly. However you do it, um, the exact specifics of how, of how you account for that is, is not as important as the fact that at the beginning, in this, at this point in the process, you can account for it. Um, what you wind up with with that is a range of points. Like this project is somewhere between 120 and 145 points of work. And then you can say, I think that a point of work is going to be somewhere between five and seven billable hours, hours on task. This is some of the stuff is going to be dependent on your situation. Um, this is kind of what works with the way that I think about what a point is worth. I normally do not like saying that a point specifically matches a certain amount of hours, but you have to do something at the beginning, like you have to punch in a number to get a number. Um, but this again gives us a range. I can take my low 150 estimate and multiply it by the five. I can take my high 200 estimate and multiply it by the seven. And that gives me a low factor for the total amount of hours I think this will take and a high factor for the total amount of hours this is going to take. This all feels ridiculously hand wavy to some of you, I am sure, and that is because it is ridiculously hand wavy. And the problem with that is that anything that takes, it's not any less accurate than stuff that is less ridiculously hand wavy and it takes a lot less time. Um, so now I, have a low, now I have a low and a high number of uh, hours. I can uh, multiply that by my rate to get estimates. I can use it to produce a range of calendar time. Um, again, exactly what you do with it at that point depends on your si normal situation. The most recent time I did this, uh, I wound up convert using our normal billable rate and converting it to a range. This project will cost you between $150 and $250,000. Often that is too wide a range for people. Uh, so maybe present some of the midpoints of that, call it between that it is likely that this will be between 160 and 180. Again, I don't know your specific situation. Um, the thing that's important is that you have a good sense of exactly what assumptions you're making and how, and, and how you choose to present that. So you need to kind of present that with a certain amount of humility. Uh, again, you're trying to build trust. You're trying to build a long-term relationship, ideally. So you want to specifically spell out what the assumptions of this are. Uh, this project, this estimate, depends on this list of stories. We all know this is going to change, and it's going to change in these specific ways. You're going to ask for new things, I'm, and it's going to change this estimate, or we're going to have to take something out. So you present it with humility. You understand that this is, that this is all going to change, because ultimately, you and the person that you are uh, presenting this estimate to, you're kind of all going to the airport together, so to speak. So uh, you may as well try to make it a good and an easy ride. So thanks. Thank you. Uh,